Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. It starts with a G chord shape. For this type of G chord shape, I'm going to put the pinky and the ring finger um, both down on the third fret of the first two strings. So those are the thinnest two strings. So your pinky finger is going to be on the third fret of the first string. Let's play this G note. Sounds like that. And your third finger, or your ring finger, is going to be on the third fret of the second string to fret this D note. Sounds like that. And those two fingers are actually going to stay there on those two notes for most of the intro. Um, the note that you play first is actually on the other side of the neck. It's with your second finger here on the third fret of the sixth string. And um, before we really get into it, um, I just want to let you know that um, the rhythm that I'm applying here is um, slightly different from the rhythm on the original recording, which is a bit inconsistent. Um, so I've just made the rhythm um, into a pattern that can be consistently repeated. Um, so FYI, before we get into the rest of it here. Um, so here you have your second finger on the third fret of your sixth string. And that's a G note, it sounds like that. And when we pick it, we want to have our right hand um, bring the pick to rest on the next string, on the fifth string, the A string. They call that a rest stroke. So as we do that, we're going to say G and. So we say the name of the note for the first half of the beat and the word and as a placeholder for the second half of the beat because this note is going to last for one beat or a quarter note. Um, so let's try doing it together. Ready and G and. Very nice. Um, something else that you might find helpful as we're going through this is if you can hook your pinky around the first string and your ring finger around the second string, um, it'll give you a bit more of a physical reference for where you are with your right hand and make it easier for you to find uh, the notes that you're looking for to pick. So after the first note, G and, we're going to play the note that our pick came to rest on, which is the open A. And when we pick that, we can lift the second finger. A. So let's try that much together. Ready, and, G and, A. Very nice. After that, the A only lasts a half beat or an eighth note, so we are not going to say and after it, just the name of the note the letter A. We're going to next employ a hammer-on technique. That looks like this. So you notice my right hand isn't doing anything. Literally, my left hand index finger hammered onto the second fret. And just give you a couple angles so you can see. You'll get the best sounding hammer-on if you come straight down onto the string with the last segment of your finger. And uh, you want to arrive as close to the fret as you can towards the body of the guitar without actually touching the fret. That will get you the best sound for the least amount of pressure with your hammer on. And it should be a quick motion like that. Aiming for something back here behind the neck. You can imagine. So you hammer through the neck. And uh, you want to make sure when you do your hammer on that you're giving your A the right amount of time, the preceding note. Um, the A and the B, which you're hammering onto, uh, that's a B note there, um, should both get the same amount of time. They should both get a half beat of time, or uh, an eighth note, as it's called. So in order to play it properly, um, I like to say G and A, hammer to B. And so I insert that little hammer to, so that um, I'm not cutting the A short. Frequently when people learn this song, I'll see them do this. G and A. And I'll cut that A a bit short. And we want that A to get um, the right amount of time, which is um, a half beat of time or an eighth note. So let's try it together uh, saying that vocal. Ready and G and A hammer to B. Nice. Now from here, um, when we picked that A, we want to have our pick landing on the D string, so another rest stroke, um, because after the hammer-on, the next note is actually going to be that open D. And when you pick that open D, you actually can keep the, the first finger down here on the second fret of the fifth string. Um, 
it's a sustainable tone, um, and we're going to need it to be there later, so it makes sense to keep it down. Um, so let's try from the beginning, doing all of that. Ready, and G, and A, hammer to B, D, and, so that D is another quarter note, or another full beat um, length of time. And uh, that's why we put the and after the name of the note, which is D. Um, from there, um, you know, if we've been doing rest strokes, after that last note that we picked the D, we wind up with our pick here on the third string. Um, but we're not gonna pick the next string this time. First time so far, we're not picking the next consecutive string. We're actually gonna bring the second finger down onto the second fret of the fourth string. So at this point, we have all four of our fingers down in this chord shape, and we're gonna bring the pick back up to pick that note that we just fretted, which is an E. And that note is going to last for two full beats, um, which is called a half note. So we're gonna say E and two and. So E for the first half of the first beat where we actually pick it, then and while we're allowing it to sound for the second half of the first beat, two to signify the first half of the second beat that it's still ringing, and then and after two to signify the second half of the second beat. So let's try all of that so far. Ready, and G and A, hammer to B, D and E and two and. Nice job. From here begins a strum pattern on the same chord that you're holding. That shape there is called an E minor seven. It sounds like this. I'll go through the strings one at a time so that you can hear them. So if you want to compare your chord shape to that sound and see if uh, it matches, it should match if you're in tune to A440. The strum pattern that occurs here goes like this. Down and two. That's the first part of it. So a dotted quarter note or one and a half beats. Next, it's a good idea to move your hand in sequence with the syllables that you're saying. So you have down and two, and your hand winds up underneath the strings. Um, and that preps you to do your next strum, which is an up. So you have like that on the next strum. Let's try doing that much of the strum pattern. Ready, and down and two, up. So yeah, sorry about that, I played a G chord there in the beginning, but uh, let's do it one more time. So, ready, and down, and two, up, and. So there's an and after that up as well, where you move your hand down without actually strumming the strings. Let's add that to what we have so far. E minor seven, ready, and down, and two, up and, very nice, last component to this strum pattern is there's one more up. So we can go through what we have so far of that and add that to the end. Ready, and, down, and, two, up, and, up, very nice. So that pattern rhythmically um, is going to recur many times. Um, so keep it in mind as we go forward. Uh, the next part of the intro is um, another melody where you're gonna keep the same chord shape and bring your pick over here to the fourth string, which we're currently holding the second fret on with the middle finger. Um, that makes an E note. We're gonna play a quarter note on this. E and, and another rest stroke as we pick that note. So we have our pick currently sitting here on the third string, and we're going to play that third string next, which is open, it's an open G. That will sound like this. Ready, and, E and, G and, very nice. And now this is the first time that I haven't done a rest stroke. Um, and you can do a rest stroke there if you want, but the reason why I don't is because you're actually gonna come back around the third string now, and you're gonna pick this fourth string, which you're still holding the second fret on for that E, you're going to pick that note one more time. So if we add that to what we have so far for this section of the intro, you'll have this. Ready, and 
E and G and E and when I picked that E the second time, I did another rest stroke, coming to rest on the fifth string, because the next note now is an open D, which we lift the second finger for. So we lift that second finger and we just go back down on that open D. It sounds like that. So let's try those four notes together, starting with the E minor seven chord shape. Here we go. Ready, and E and G and E and D and two and. So that last note, D, again, two beats. Um, that is also a recurring pattern in this song in the intro. Um, the last note of each of the melody sequences is uh, two beats, a half note. Um, all of them except for right before you go into the chords of the verse. So keep that in mind as we go through it. After you do that D for two times, you're actually going to go back to the um, G chord that you had in the beginning, except this time we're also going to have the index finger down on the second fret, B. Um, so we have this full G chord shape here, and we do the same strum pattern that we did on the E minor 7 chord shape, which is like this. Ready, and down, and two, up, and up. Very nice. So that is the first half of the intro of Wish You Were Here. Um, let's run it together from the beginning. Ready, and G, and A, hammer to B, D, and E, and two, and down, and two, up, and up, E, and G, and E, and D, and two, and down, and two, up, and up, repeat, G, and A, hammer to B, D, and E, and two, and down, and two, up, and up, E, and G, and E, and D, and two, and down, and two, up, and up. Let's do a third time. G, and A, hammer to B, D and E and two and down and two up and up E and stop. <laughs> Reason why I brought you there is because uh, at that moment, in the third time that you play uh, the these notes of the intro, we have an alternate ending, and the alternate ending goes instead of to open G, which is where the first ending was going after that E note, it goes actually to open D now. So we lift the second finger to play the open fourth string. So if I play from that last E that we played together just a moment ago, it'll sound something like this. Ready, and E and D and after that, we're gonna pick the fifth string, which our first finger is still on, that's a B note. Sounds like that. So let's try adding that. That's another quarter note, so we're gonna say B and. Ready, and. B and, D and, B and. Nice job. Now, the last note for this part of the melody. We lift the index finger, and we play the open A string, the open fifth string, and this one's another half note, because this is the last, um, note of this melody. A and two and. So let's try it from that E again. Ready and. E and D and B and A and two and. Nice job. From there, the index and middle fingers move in tandem together to the second fret on 
the middle two strings this time. Um, so this now makes a different chord shape than we had before. Before we had them over a string on the fifth and fourth strings, that makes an E minor seven. Now we have them on the fourth and third strings, which makes a chord that sounds something like this. I'll play from the open A down. This chord is known as A7 suspended four, or A7 sus four for short. Um, sounds quite nice. Um, and we're gonna just apply the same strum pattern that we did on the E minor seven and on the G chord to this A7 sus four now. So we have down, and two, up, and up. Very nice. So um, if you'd like, we can try going through what we have so far uh, from the beginning. <laughs> so, by the way, that alternate ending is going to r repeat a second time. And uh, so I'm going to be doing that this time, so, just so you're ready for it. Here we go. Ready, and G, and A, hammer to B, D, and E, and 2, and down, and 2, up, and up, B, and G, and B, and D, and 2, and down, and 2, up, and up, repeating G, and A, hammer to B, D, and E, and 2, and down, and 2, up, and up, B, and G, and extra strum that last time uh, because after you've gone through uh, the intro with the first ending two times and the second ending two times um, now comes the transitional part which transitions into the verse or actually the guitar solo first with the repeat of the intro but then the verse also so um, that one extra strum is a down and uh, I'm just gonna run through that last set of strums there on the a7 sus4 so ready and down and two up and up here it is down and nice job so your hand moves up one more time um, without strumming from there we're gonna go open a hammer to b which is on the second fret of the fifth string picking the open a again so so far you have three notes the a hammer to B, A. Next, you bring your second finger down here to the third fret on the sixth string, the G, which is the note that we started the tune on. So let's try those four notes now from the open A. Ready, and A hammer to B, A, G. And now we strum a G chord. So just remember to bring your first finger back to the second fret on the fifth string so you're fretting the full G chord. Um, from here, um, we begin the strum pattern of the verse, which um, I'll show you now. It goes um, down and two and down, 
up, down, and. That's it. So it's just a half note, two eighth notes, and one quarter note. I'll do it one more time for you. Ready on the G chord? And, down, and, two, and, down, up, down, and. Let's repeat it. Down, and, down, up. Oh, my mistake. It's supposed to be a half note. So let's repeat it one more time. Or actually, let's repeat it three times, because that's how many times it happens in the song. So ready, and then strumming the G. Down, and, two, and. Down, up, down, and repeating. Down, and, two, and. Down, up, down, and repeating again. Down, and, two, and. Down, up, down. And that was three times. We're going to add one extra down. And now you can repeat the intro. So that is how you play um, the intro before the solo of Wish You Were Here. And uh, keep in mind that the rhythm that David Gilmore does when he is um, strumming here um, varies a little bit um, from what I was just going over. He does play it that way some of the times and other times he doesn't. But just to keep it consistent for us as we're playing it um, and so that we have uh, a rhythm that we can just remember that suits the song and is appropriate for the feel of the song. That's the way we're playing it. Um, so with that, uh, we'll play the whole intro one time together and um, hopefully I'll have uh, videos up soon for y'all of the solo and um, of the chord progression for the verse and uh, I believe there is a video up already of me playing the whole song. If you'd like to check that out and you'd like to try playing along with it, please feel free. Let's play the whole intro together. Ready and G and A hammer to B, D and E and two and down and two up and up E and G and E and D and two and now the G chord down and two up and up repeating G and A hammer to B D and B and two and down and two up and up B and G and E and D and two and down and two up and up third time now G and A hammer to B D and E and two and down and two up and up now the alternate ending e and open d and b and open a and two and a seven plus four down and two up and up from the beginning g and a hammer to b d and e and two and down and two up and up open ending e and open d and b and open a and two and a seven plus four down and two up and up an extra down and a hammer to b a g strum the g chord and two and down, up, down, and repeating that pattern. Down, and two, and down, up, down, and one more time. Down, and two, and down, up, down, one final strum. Down, and repeat the intro. And next, the guitar solo comes in while the intro goes underneath. So you can continue to play the 
intro riff underneath while the guitar solo is going if you have another player if you're playing along with a recording of the song um, or um, you can learn the solo which like I said before hopefully that video will be up um, very soon uh, explaining the solo and uh, thanks for watching hope this video was helpful and uh, good luck with your practice and y'all till next time bye now